Right. We'll, we all in. Not real historians, miss. They'll learn. Anyway, hope you're all well. Uh, this is my presentation on the Medici family and the uh, Patsy conspiracy. So I thought I'll give you a bit of context because otherwise you probably have no idea what's going on. So as you can see there, um, Italy is made up of a load of city-states, of which Kingdom of Naples happens to be one of the biggest, as well as Milan, Republic of Venice. And then over there, we've got Florence, and that's where we lay our scene. Um, so, a bit about the Florentine Republic. So, in 1115, the Florentine people rebelled against the Margraviate, nailed that, uh, of Tuscany upon the death of Matilda, who controlled vast territories. So, they thought, all right, big leaders died, we want our own rule, we'll set up a republic, which is what they did. So, they created the Signoria, which was like a council at the time, their like governing uh, body. And the head of that was a man called, or not a man, or a figure called the Gonfalonieri, who was kind of like the ruler, who was uh, elected every two months by the Florentine guild members, which were like artisans and merchants and stuff like that. And the Gonfalonieri would then pick the eight other members of the Signoria. So that's, uh, that's how the kind of government works with that. Every two months. Um, uh, the main, the kind of Gonfalonieri would stay the same for quite a while, to be honest. It, would, it, wouldn't, it was quite low-key, the elections. So, the Republic had a checkered history of coups and counter-coups against various factions, but the uh, Medici faction gained governance under Cosimo in 1434, and they kept control until 1494, uh, when Piero, the unfortunate is his name, lost, lost power, and uh, yeah, he's a bit of a letdown him. But they uh, took control back under Giovanni de' Medici, who uh, became Pope Leo X, uh, reconquering the Republic in 1512. But that man there is Cosimo, who is played by Richard Madden. And um, <laughs> Cosimo, Cosimo was a very talented merchant, really good banker. But his dad, also called Giovanni, uh, was also very, very good banker, made a lot of money, kind of brought them up to the scene. So that's kind of, Giovanni was probably the main guy who brought them up there because they kind of cemented their power. And then if you see that kind of badge there, sigil, house, crest, that's the Medici crest. And it's obviously, it's not, it's a bit of a fable, it's not true to the story. Um, but those red balls were supposed to be the dents of a giant who'd hit his mace into one of the Medici uh, soldiers who had served under Charlemagne's banner after he was protecting a city. So this giant had hit the mace into the shield five times and so it left those dents in there, which then became the sigil. But uh, believe it or not, that story is probably not true. Um, so here's a bit of background about the Medici. So the Medici was an Italian banking family and political dynasty that first began to gather provenance under Cosimo and uh, in the uh, 15th century. So they originated in the Mugello region of Tuscany, which uh, any of you Formula One fans out there know there's been a recent race there, so that's quite nice. And uh, they prospered gradually until they were able to fund their own bank. So this bank was the largest in Europe and uh, it facilitated their rise to power in Florence, basically allowing them to take control. And, uh, but they did remain citizens until uh, the 16th century. And that right there is Giuliano de' Medici, and that is Lorenzo. And Lorenzo is the kind of head of the family during the Patsy conspiracy. And that's his younger brother, but they're both quite cool. So I'll move on to uh, a bit more about them. So their wealth and influence was initially derived from the textile trade, uh, guided by the Wool Guild of Florence and the Arte della Lana. Um, like other families uh, ruling in Italian Signori, the Medici dominated their city's government and were able to bring Florence under their family's power and create an environment in which art and humanism flourished. So does anyone recognise that painting, by the way? I don't know if you can see it, sir. So... Yes, can you? Do you recognise it? No. 
Uh, so that's a Botticelli painting called Venus and Mars, which is quite famous. And that the, the bloke on the right is supposed to be Giuliano de' Medici, and the woman on the left is supposed to be Simonetta Vespucci. And um, basically, they were supposed to be having an affair. And um, so Botticelli had painted them, and Botticelli had grown up with Lorenzo, and um, Giuliano is kind of like part of their household, so he's almost like a brother to them. But this is quite important because um, they, Simonetta Vespucci had been killed by her husband after he found out about their affair and was killed on the 26th of April 1476, which was exactly two days before, uh, two years before the uh, Patsy conspiracy. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit, I'll kind of show the relevance of that a bit later. So here's Lorenzo. Um, this kind of pyjama looking thing, but clearly, clearly a merchanty type bloke. Uh, more commonly known as Lorenzo the Magnificent. He was the son of Piero the Gouty, who was uh, also not the great, so Pieros aren't silly good. And the grandson of Cosimo, as we spoke about before. And a uh, keen diplomat who wanted to direct Florentine affairs, both domestically and diplomatically. Um, that's quite a noble cause. He, he did. It does appear that he genuinely wanted the best for the Florentine people and did what he could to help them. So as I said before, he's a patron of the arts, sponsoring famous Renaissance artists, Botticelli and Michelangelo. But one of Lorenzo's main aims was to stem the territorial ambitions of Pope Sixtus IV, who was a key contributor to the Patsy conspiracy. So he's relevant as well. So remember, remember Pope Sixtus. You can see Sean being there on the bottom right. So, the Patsy Conspiracy, you'd expect it would come from somewhere, and uh, these are the people behind it. So, you can see their coat of arms there. Looks a bit kind of dragony, but it's supposed to be dolphins for some reason, but I don't really see that. And they were also a banking family from Florence, who uh, were rivals to the Medici, and the um, family was headed up by Jacopo, him. In, uh, in the Medici series. And um, he was also a banker who was extremely bitter and envious of Lorenzo and the Medici's power. And he, was, he really wanted it for himself. So he became the head of the family after the death of his older brother, Piero, who would actually kind of calm attentions down between them and the Medici. And um, his younger brother died in 1451, Antonio, who had two sons, Francesco and Guillermo. Francesco is the relevant one we'll talk about. Um, but Francesco had actually grown up as best mates with um, Lorenzo. They were really close. So it's quite sad what, how that kind of went wrong, basically. And um, but actually, Francesco kind of rekindled their friendship in later life. and. Um, he was actually the godfather of Lorenzo's son, Piero, with uh, Clarice Orsini, who's from another noble uh, background. So that's Francesco. But um, Jacopo vowed to do everything in his power to undermine the Medici and take control from them. And uh, this led to the Patsy conspiracy in 1478. So I'm not gonna read all of that, but the Patsy conspiracy, uh, wasn't just a plot by the members of the Passi family, but also the Salviati, uh, Pope Sixtus IV, uh, the Riarios and the Della Rovere's. Um, Salviati was important, Francesco Salviati. He was one of the cousins of the Patsies, and he was actually an archbishop and one of um, Pope Sixtus's senior advisors. So he was constantly in his ear trying to, trying to um, influence him. But Cosimo, um, uh, Lorenzo's granddad had um, secured the Medici Bank as the Papal Bank, which was very prestigious at the time. I mean, people would literally kill for that at that time. That kind of cemented your power, basically. Um, so the Patsy wanted to do what they could to try and take that from them. So what had happened was Lorenzo had set up a trade route with Venice for, for Florence um, to kind of prosper, and uh, they got a lot of their food from Venice. But um, Francesco della Rovere, who was elected Pope in 1471, who became Sixtus IV, wasn't actually from a particularly 
high up noble background, his, uh, his kind of family wasn't that rich. So when he took power, he did everything he could to try and give handouts to his, uh, his family, particularly his nephews and um, his, well, potentially his son. We don't know this, but um, uh, Girolamo Diario. Um, so yeah, he tried to give them, uh, like, kind of make them titles such as uh, bishops and uh, cardinals and um, made uh, Giovanni a uh, priest despite not being prefect, uh, despite not, made Giovanni prefect of Rome despite not being a priest. So, G. G. Lano, it's quite difficult to say that, um, was potentially his son. So he was kind of quite fond of him. So what he did was he tried to buy Imola, which was on the road between the Venice and Florentine trade route. And he wanted to buy that for um, Riario for him to have. However, Lorenzo, five years earlier, had tried to buy that from the Sforza, Imola, for 100,000 Fiorino d'Oro. But um, the, co the Pope tried to, under uh, tried to force him out of it and instead agreed to a 40,000 deal with um, the Sforza instead in return for Riario managing his illegitimate daughter. So Lorenzo was obviously not happy about this, but one of the, other, one of the like, main ironic things about it is he said to Lorenzo, okay, you can't buy this, I'm telling you you can't buy this. By the way, as, as, our, as our bank, you've got to fund us buying it. So he was not happy about that at all. So Lorenzo refused it, said we are absolutely not buying that for you. Um, so he looked elsewhere, i.e. to the Patsy, to purchase it. And although Francesco promised Lorenzo they wouldn't do it, he ended up doing it anyway. And so Lorenzo was not happy about that. Um, so six disappointed his nephew Riario as the new governor of Imola and uh, Francesco Salviati as the Archbishop of Pisa. So um, Lorenzo refused to permit Salviati to enter Pisa because of the challenge such an ecclesiastical position offered to his own government in Florence. So here's the actual conspiracy itself. So Riario, Salviati and the Pazzi uh, put together a plan to assassinate Lorenzo and Giuliano. Sixtus was approached for his support, but as Pope, he can't really authorise that. So uh, he kind of carefully worded a statement in which he said that he was unable to sanction it. But basically, it would be great if they could do it. So he kind of said, you know, we can't say we can do it, but if you could, that would be pretty helpful. So uh, he, would deal, he would deal kindly with anyone who did this. So he instructed the men to do what they deemed necessary to achieve the same and said that he would give them whatever support he could. But what was kind of extremely controversial about it was um, because Lorenzo and Giuliano were always pretty well protected, they were kind of most vulnerable in mass. And, um, well, that's especially controversial for the Pope because uh, his only opportunity really to have them killed was during mass. So, what they did was the Medici um, brothers were assaulted on Sunday the 26th of April, 1478, during high mass at the, Duoro, uh, the Duomo, sorry, before a crowd of 10,000. So the Duomo is, um, I think it's called the Santa Maria del Fiore, which is that and that, and uh, Cosimo beforehand had actually had the, um, the building built, and he had uh, Brunelleschi uh, sort out the dome, which was like very revolutionary at the time. No one could work out how to do it. But there's actually like an inside dome in between it, so you can actually walk between the two domes. Um, in Florence. So what happened was um, they planned that as the priest raised the host that would be a signal for them all to rush at the Medici and uh, Giuliano was actually not supposed to go to mass that day because he was uh, mourning after Simonetta Vespucci had been killed exactly two years before that so he'd kind of said to his mother no I don't want to go I want to stay on my own today but his mum had managed to convince him to go to mass so he ended up going Obviously not a great decision. Um, so he, he ended up being killed by Francesco, taking a head wound, and uh, received 19 stab wounds as well. Uh, Lorenzo escaped, but um, he uh, was locked safely in the sacristy by Ang uh, Angelo Poliziano. And the sacristy is like a 
little side room where you keep all the furnishments and everything like that. So it was relatively safe. And then a coordinated attempt to capture the Gonfalonieri and the Signoria was uh, thwarted when the Archbishop and, and head of the Salviati clan were trapped in a room where the doors were held by a hidden latch. I always find that quite funny. Um, so the consequences, that by the way, is um, Baroncelli. And that was painted by Leonardo, or not painted, drawn by Leonardo. So that's quite famous. And uh, although Lorenzo appealed to not exact summary justice, many of the conspirators were killed. And uh, But he did manage to save Cardinal Raffaele uh, Riaria, who was most likely innocent. So he still kind of remained quite moral, um, Lorenzo. Didn't take as kindly to the uh, other main perpetrators, i.e. the, the uh, Francesco and um, Jacopo, and had them hung by... Uh, the Palazzo, Palazzo Vecchio, which is that building there, uh, which you can still see today. And um, Balancelli actually escaped, but was returned by the Sultan Mehmed, um, still wearing his Turkish clothing. And then, as you can see, that's, that's what he looks like. And uh, Jacopo had actually tried to escape Florence, but um, he'd been captured by uh, kind of Medici sympathizers and had been brought back where he was hung next to um, Francesco's rotting corpse. And then he was actually buried in Santa Croce. But he was dug up by um, anti-Patsies and uh, his, he was thrown into the River Arno. Then he was brought back out, his head was chopped off. Then his head was hung next to the Patsy, Palazzo Patsy door as a door knocker, so people would ram that against the door. And uh, then he was eventually uh, Kind of his body was pulled through the streets, mocked, and then eventually thrown back into the river. There were three further executions on the 6th of June, 1481, but, uh, and the Patsy were banished from Florence and the lands and property confiscated. Um, so you can see there, all the kind of Patsy stuff was, uh, was censored, and um, anyone with the name would have to shit or would have to take a new name. Anyone married to a Patsy was barred from public office. One, one person married to a Patsy was Bianca Medici, who married Guillermo, who was Francesco's younger brother. So they actually escaped, they actually fled after the Patsy conspiracy, fearing that Guillermo would be killed, even though he had absolutely nothing to do with it. He was always quite, quite fond of the Medici. Uh, and he'd kind of grown up as a child of sweet, uh, sweethearts with her. Uh, so they had, to, they had to go and live at uh, Torre Adesima, near uh, Pontesiv. So the aftermath of it was that the, um, they can, it basically convinced supporters of Medici that a greater concentration of power was desirable and uh, they had faith in Lorenzo and wanted to strengthen his position. He demonstrated that he'd had an ability in conducting foreign affairs for the city and it emboldened the Medici in their position of carrying out new reforms. Um, I'm not going to cover it now, um, but after, after the Patsy conspiracy, uh, because Salviati was hung, um, the Pope actually excommunicated Florence um, because of that for hanging an archbishop. But I won't talk about that. And um, that is it. Thank you. Very good.